With the rise of generative AI technology, such as AI art generators, AI text generators, and more, there's been a lot of chatter in the writing community about what this means for the future of writers and, frankly, the future of humanity. And there's a lot of polarization. Either AI is amazing and can do no wrong, or you're the devil for using AI and it's complete theft and irresponsible and unethical to use. And I think in in those conversations, we miss some of the, the conversations that we could be having in the middle of different use cases for AI that, one, are ethical, two, responsible, and three, are going to help save you time, effort, and money. AI tools are great, but they're not all created equal. There are a lot of conversations around copyright right now, and those haven't been settled in the courts. And so there are some use cases that I think are perfectly fine to use right now. And there are some use cases that I probably wouldn't use if I were a writer until some of these issues get settled by the courts and governments and regulation and things like that. So in this video, we're going to talk about different AI technologies that you can start using today, and we're going to range them from the most safe all the way down to the least safe. Now, as you guys know, I'm a proponent of the ethical and responsible use of AI. I'm not interested in taking food off of somebody's table or putting anyone out of a job. I'm just interested in playing around with the technology and figuring out what the future is so we can figure out how to live within that future. Because it feels like a lot of things are changing. It feels like there has been a paradigm shift within the last six months. And I think we have to navigate that. And we're not going to get there by burying our heads in the sand. We're not going to get there by shaking our fists at AI technology because it's not going anywhere. So we got to figure out how to make peace with it. And we got to figure out how to make it work for us. The first use case that I think is the safest use case of AI is for editing. All right. So now I'm not talking about developmental editing. I'm not talking about replacing a human editor. I'm talking about looking for typos in your work. So did you know that you can paste sections of your work into ChatGPT, the free version, with the prompt, edit this text for typos only, and it will edit your text and look for typos only. It won't mess with your voice. It won't add anything into the text that you didn't already write. And it's just going to help you find those spelling and grammar errors. And you can even use a Chrome plugin called Edit GPT that will tell you what chat GPT changed in your work. This is a great use case. And what I found is that GPT-3, GPT-3.5, and GPT-4 are very capable proofreaders that find things that Grammarly and ProWritingAid do not. So when used in conjunction with those two, you can double, in some cases, the amount of typos that you catch. And then when you use that in conjunction with a human editor, you can almost create manuscripts that may not have any typos in them, which is a win for you and a win for your readers. The next use case is AI audio. Now, there are some differing opinions about AI audio and what this means for the future of narrators. Here's what I think about it. I think that there are certain audiobooks that don't make sense to hire a human narrator for. So let me give you an example. I have a series. It's called Indie Author Confidential, and it's a quarterly series where I talk about all the things that I'm learning on my journey to become a successful author. I release that series quarterly, and each book is around anywhere from 25,000 to 40,000 words. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for me to hire a human narrator every single quarter to narrate the book. And it really doesn't make sense for me to narrate it myself because it takes a lot of time to produce an audio book. So this is a perfect example where I can use an AI audio generator to create a lifelike narration experience and then sell that on different retailers or on my website directly. And it allows me to create an audio book that would have never been in existence. I think those are the best candidates for AI audio. I think that if you like the human experience, continue hiring humans where humans can excel. There are many different AI voice generators out there, and if I name some, they're going to be obsolete by the time this video turns a month old, so I'm not going to do that. But the key is to read the terms of service, make sure that you have a commercial use, and make sure that the voices sound good and it would be a good reader experience. And I think that uh, this is a perfectly, perfectly acceptable and perfectly safe way to use AI right now. 
The next use case that I think is pretty safe is coding. So you're probably thinking, Michael, I'm a writer. Why would I use AI for coding? Well, why wouldn't you use it for coding? You can use ChatGPT to write automation scripts. You can use it for uh, writing Microsoft Word macros, Microsoft Excel macros, Apple scripts, all sorts of different languages that can help you save time, save energy as a writer. And these are probably things that you probably wouldn't have hired somebody to do anyway. So now you have a capability to help you automate. And all you have to do is watch some YouTube videos, try to figure out what it is that you want and articulate that to chat GPT and see if it can do it. And I have created a few different working applications with chat GPT after just a few minutes of prompting. Now it goes without saying you should use those apps for your own personal use. I wouldn't go off and sell them. The next use case that I think is pretty safe is for idea generation, character generation, or outlining. I've seen a lot of writers use this to great effect. You type in what you want, you get an outline maybe for a short story, or you, you get some inspirations on how to deal with writer's block. I think ChatGPT and tools like that are great for that. And the reason that they're great for it is because you're just getting ideas. You're not taking what the, the program is giving you and putting it on the page. You're just getting ideas, all right? And then you're using your own words to write the story, to write the character, to break through the writer's block. I think that if you're, if you're somebody that deals with writer's block, I think that tools like ChatGPT are wonderful for helping you get out of it. The next one is a fan favorite on my channel and something that a few people have said has worked for them really, really well. And that is using a tool like ChatGPT to update or edit or jazz up your book descriptions. So I know all, many of you, I shouldn't say all, because there are some rare creatures in this community that really enjoy writing book descriptions. But for most of us mere mortals, we don't enjoy that, right? It's, it's, book description is usually something we put together at the last minute. It's usually put together as an afterthought. And we'd rather get a root canal, right? Well, what if you took your existing book description and asked ChatGPT to make it better, make it more salesy? You know, assign a role to it. Tell ChatGPT that you're an award-winning marketer. You know, you have tons of millions of, of authors that come to you for writing compelling copy, and you give it your book description, and you tell it to fix it, and make it punchy, make it snappy, you know, put lots of hype words in there, and, and make it better than it is. I think that's a really compelling use case, because it's taking what you already have and making it a little bit better. And I think that the risks of committing plagiarism or, or even copyright infringement or something like that are fairly low. Now, I think it goes up if you're going to be using it to generate book descriptions, period. You know, you don't have something and you tell it, generate a book description. I think that's a little riskier and not something that I would do. But to get ideas on updating your existing book descriptions, I think that's fair game. We're still in what I believe is pretty safe territory, and I think the next use case is very similar to what I just talked about, but copywriting assistance. So help with your email newsletters, for example. Help with some of your marketing copy for your Facebook page or your author bio, you know, things like that where maybe, you know, you've, got, you've written this copy, and maybe it's really old, or maybe, you know, you think it could be better, but you don't really know how it can generate some really interesting ideas and interesting phrases or interesting words that you can sprinkle in to your existing copy to make it stronger. And again, I think that's a compelling use case because yes, while you are taking some of the text that it gives you, you're integrating that with what you've already written and making it stronger. Now, the next one is one you might be surprised to see on this list, and that is research, fact-checking, and continuity. Now, why would I say this when it's a known issue that uh, programs like ChatGPT sometimes can hallucinate, where they, they just go off and just say weird and crazy stuff that's not true? <laughs> well, a few things on that. The first thing is that they're getting better at that. And now that ChatGPT offers plugins, the, the quality of your outputs is likely to increase in the near future. And I, I think that's more of a short-term problem. The second thing is, we shouldn't throw out the baby with the bathwater. So I, I had one of my novels. I was just playing around just to experiment. And I have a series that's called the Chicago Rat Shifter series. And in that series, the, the main character can turn into a rat. He's a rat shifter. So what I did was I went to ChatGPT and I said, 
ChatGPT, you are a Nobel winning prize biologist who has done amazing work with rats and rodents. And you know everything about rodent biology and you know things about rodents that nobody else knows. I'm an author and I have a section that is written through the perspective of a rat when my hero is in his rat form. Please review this section and let me know of any issues that you see with the portrayal of rats in this chapter. And what I got was kind of mind blowing. <laughs> it was kind of amazing. Now, here's the thing. Yes, you're going to get some really interesting stuff. You still have to fact check it though. So it provided some really interesting details on rodent biology that I didn't think about. And so I went and double checked it and looked it up and it checked out. So using it for this, I still think you have to do your own due diligence. I wouldn't take anything that it says, you know, verbatim, but it can give you some interesting ideas that can be a good jumping off point. Now, another thing that it can do is it can help you with a little bit of continuity errors. So things like if a character sits down twice, if a character does something that's not logical, it can, you can ask it, please review this section and identify anything that doesn't make logical sense. And you can play around with your prompts a little bit. And I think you might be surprised. So if you've got particular sections of your novel, I wouldn't do this for the whole thing, but if you've got sections of your novel that you're concerned about, you know, for, you know, readers pulling them out of the story and being like, huh, that doesn't make any sense, then try it and see what happens. Now we're getting into territory that I think is not really safe right now. And that's Michael Laron's opinion. Okay. Then let's talk about AI art. So I love AI art. Um, I have a mid-journey account. I, I have a paid mid-journey account. I'm using it to play around with it, learn how to do prompting, all that good stuff. And I really enjoy it. And I think it's the future because it allows you to generate art that you could not get otherwise, either without paying a lot of money or having to basically create photo shoots and, and getting the right models and things yourself. I think that's the future of stock photos personally, but I think it's not safe to use right now because there's so many questions around copyright that aren't settled. So really, I, I personally am not using AI art for anything other than something that would be personal use or me playing around. And I'm, I'm waiting for the dust to settle with some of these lawsuits. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it, but there is a very outsized risk that you could potentially infringe upon the rights of an artist, especially if you're one of those knuckleheads out there that's using living artists in your prompts or if you're using reference materials with copyrighted material. Don't do that. That is a big no-no. But if you want to play around with it and experiment with it, uh, I, I don't think the technology is going away, and I think we're going to get some clarity on this hopefully in the next year or so. To me, it's a no-no for book covers right now, and, and I emphasize the words right now. Um, I think it's a no-no for graphics work that you might be doing on your site for marketing, uh, things like that. And really, the only, the only real use case I would maybe consider would be using it like on your blog or using it to show a demo or, you know, sharing some things on your social media, I think is probably fine. But using it for commercial use, I, I would probably not do that right now. So the next thing I want to talk about is AI text generators. There are lots of AI text generators out there. You can use the OpenAI Playground. You can use ChatGPT. There's tools like PseudoWrite and all sorts of other other tools out there that you can use. And I think they're great for coming up with ideas and things like that. I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily use the text from them for the same reasons that, that I mentioned before. And there's going to be people out there that say, well, but how can anyone ever know that, you know, it's plagiarism or blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. But I'm just not convinced right now, as of April 3rd, 2023, that these tools are producing text that is really that good, um, especially for fiction. Nonfiction, I think, is a different story. But I haven't seen anything yet from a fiction perspective that has made me be like, oh, wow, you know, that's great. I think that's going to change very soon in a matter of months, certainly not years. But until the dust settles on some of the copyright stuff, I, I would be very leery of, of doing it unless, you know, you disclose up front that you're doing it so you're not pulling the wool over readers' eyes. Um, 
And then also that you make sure that you're running anything that you do through a plagiarism checker and making sure that you're not accidentally infringing on someone's rights. Because this stuff is really murky, I just don't think it's a good idea to play in it right now, but I do think it's a good idea to experiment with it, use it for your own personal use, and get a sense of what is coming in the future because this is just the beginning. It's not the end. But, you know, things change fast. It's April 3rd as I record this, and I guarantee you by the time this video goes live, there will be some new developments and new advancements in the technology. So I look forward to the day when a year from now, the, the world is a completely different place. And that's why I think we have to use this technology and learn how to use it, because if we don't, things are going to evolve so quickly that we, we really run the risk of getting left behind. And we don't want to do that as authors, right? We want to be on top of things, we want to be using technology in a way that, as I said, is ethical and responsible and also allows us to save time, money, and effort. So I want to hear from you. What are you using AI for if you're using it? All opinions are welcome. Just don't be a jerk. Have fun, and I'll talk to you in the next video.